All right, we're back. It's another day. I'm chilling next to Bud because Cody decided he wanted to do a little, oh my God. He wanted to do a little bit of uh, improvements to the front. So uh, let's go see what he's been doing. Basically, I don't want to say I'm wasting time, but um, it's, it needed an air dam because, yeah, because the rest <laughs> of it's got side skirts on it. I know it's a little bright, sorry, just because dealing with the sun. But yeah, so he took the diamond plating that he's, he has, he was like, I'm going to make an air dam. And at first it kind of was, you know, it was looking. Connor thinks I'm special. <laughs> It, it, I mean, you just got to take it for what it is and let it be a finished product before you can judge. That's that's what you really got to do. Connor is still judging. Yeah, he is. That's okay. But it is. It's kind of cool, like I said, to actually see this. Like, he even, like, made his own little... What, do you, what are you going to call these? I guess deflectors. This will get trimmed off. A little more finished. Yeah, I'm trying to get air around the tire, and then... Uh, kind of like around the gas tank and stuff too. Create a low pressure so it doesn't drag the gas tank and all that. Got a nice flow over there. It's a, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. So I did the math. Uh, over 10,000 miles, if it saves a half mile per gallon, it's about $700 in fuel savings. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, dang. Okay. So that's. That's the grand strategy. You know, not like this is, you know, a high mile, uh, what do we call it, hyper miler. Yeah. It does all right anyway, but. No, but the the good news is though is every place that we go with Bud to transport something, it is a decent little hike. I mean, it's still obviously in Michigan, but. Yeah, it's it's a couple hundred miles. Yeah. So, I'm excited to see how it's gonna look, just based on everything. I mean, it's pretty much all done except yeah, he said he's got to trim up some spots over there. Got to. Fix some stuff over here. And other than that, he also wanted to, or he, I think he told me he has some news about the fuel pump. So once he's done with that, we'll talk about the fuel pump. So we are out here because I don't think the people have really seen the siding and extra all the extra oh, stuff yeah, that you've we done. Didn't do that yet. No, so give us a tour. So just whatever, the siding is, I guess maybe some gas mileage, but basically just the, it looks, I guess. And it's not done. I want to do some more like 3D boxing in around the steps and stuff, but yeah. Hey, this is, it's super cool because when I first saw the guys doing this a couple weeks ago, I was like, well, are we like gonna wrap it? Like what's it? I was kind of curious because it, you know, I've never really seen this kind of done before. But Me now, really. what? Me either, really. Normally really? ramp trucks, they like steel sides and... Yeah. But with Michigan, it's gonna last like one winter and just fall apart. Yeah. And that's how this looks. Boom, hold on, let's get back. Like you said. Oh yeah. Look at that. You happy with it? You've done a hell of a transformation in the past couple months. Yeah, getting there. I need to get some, uh, get some plastic like they use on Miatas and uh, spec me out of. I'm gonna do that on the, on the bottom. Drop it right to the ground. Let it let it rub. You don't want to do it though. But yeah, it's it's different. I think it looks good. I don't know. I know it de it definitely turns heads every time we are in town. Like we did that run for the argon yeah. tanks and stuff. It's yeah. I mean, it looks like a tow truck, and then people are like, wait a minute, it's not a tow truck. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm happy with. It. I'm a, I'm pretty happy with it. Sweet. I know, it's it's always weird to see. I mean, we get people honking all the time. I think you've probably had at least two people stop by and check it out yeah, in the past couple of days. Yeah, the honking are, are air horns or semis. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who they are. I don't know if they just like the truck. I have no idea. Yeah, that's cool. No, you've done a lot. It's super yeah. cool. But you also heard some good news about fuel pump stuff. Yeah, so good news and bad. So there's probably like two hours of runtime in the car. We've not even put 100 gallons of fuel in it, I don't think. Yeah, probably not. And so I also sent them the fuel filter because uh, the thing obviously destroyed itself. And it really did. Yeah. I guess the tech that was dealing with the pump walked up to the uh, technical guy that I was talking to, his name is Brett at Aeromotive. And he's like, dude, you gotta check this out. The gears are like welded together. Ooh. So 
And then when that happened, it took out the motor controller and the motor. Yeah. So I completely destroyed that pump. Um, apparently, the uh, there's a fuel lab filter. It was a pretty big filter, but I guess it wasn't big enough. Um, apparently, it clogged up in less than two hours. Yeesh. And I wasn't monitoring pressure before the fuel filter and after the pump. I was mm -hmm. only monitoring rail pressure. And I thought something might have been off because we got back from Colorado and I was only seeing 35 PSI of rail pressure. We were seeing 40, 42 in Colorado. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just an altitude thing. I didn't care because the way the tune is set up, it just yeah. compensates for fuel pressure anyway. So I suspect it was on the way out, out there. I don't know if we put... You know, E85 isn't exactly the cleanest fuel, but not. either way, um, Aeromotive's sending me a proper filter for what they want to see and some fitting adapters so I can add another sensor. Um, Sweet. I think I'm going to do one of those Bosch sensors that Haltech sells now. I think it's just a Bosch. It does pressure and temperature. Ooh, okay. So then you can get a, re a real feel for what's going on. So Sweet. That way, if you get a big differential, say it takes, you know, 70 PSI to make 40 at the rail. Yeah. We but we better change the filter. So yeah. that one, I, it was my, it was my bad. I've never seen it happen that quick. Mm -hmm. So, but so it happened. So yeah, basically, the fuel filter clogged up. It was trying to push 150, 200 psi. Nobody knows, and it just killed itself. So, All right. So that that we'll have that tomorrow. So we'll have the car running again tomorrow. Tick. Uh, well, hopefully, I don't know if the filter is going to fit. We'll see. So provided I don't have to redesign the entire fuel system, we're running running tomorrow. Get some get some dyno fun. I want to make sure it reads down at seven pounds. Might be able to get a real pull. Yeah, like you a, think? Full, a full seven seven or eight pound pull. The issue before is it was boost creeping, mm -hmm. and I thought it was because it was starting to get close to the rev limit. Yeah. And when when timing starts to cut, boost goes up, and it, I think it was just boost creep. Gotcha. So, so if you do the dyno and stuff, would we do it on like ninety three out here, or would we do it on eighty five? Eighty five. Do yourself enough. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I Myers right there. Yeah. I've got yeah. those 55 gallon barrels. Like I'm at a point, I might actually toss a few of them on Bud. Go fill them up with the 85. Yeah. And by when he means Myers down the road, he means I'm gonna do it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can drive Bud. Oh, you, do you that. Could, you could do it. Oh, that yeah. would be yikes! Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> but, I, but I took it down and yeah. uh, did a delivery pickup. Picked up one of his buddy's cars. I won't talk about the diamond plate. <laughs> no, I. Yeah. But uh, no, you did fine. So, but, yeah. So, next step for this, I got to do a couple little reinforcement things. The bumper is basically done, except I want to do like a plastic air dam now. Mm -hmm. um, so that way it's on the dirt. Yeah. So do that. That'll help a lot with mileage. Um, just keep the air out from underneath it. And then you got the skirts down the side. I'll probably do some plastic down those too. So. Sweet. Yeah. There it is. There it is. We have this on the dyno right now. Uh, <laughs> so how did it go this morning? I just did one poll just to make sure it's good to go before you got here. And then, uh, yeah, we can, we'll do another couple polls. But boost holds, so which Sweet. was the goal. Um, targeting seven pounds, it stayed stayed down under eight. It was like down 7.8 pounds or something. So still spins, but yeah. such, such is life. I figure I'll do a quick thing, and then after this, we're going testing tomorrow. So, um, the other thing we did, we tested um, changes to the, the oiling system mm -hmm. that, because I did a couple things wrong. Yep. That's fixed. Seems to be doing great. We have uh, no blow by anywhere now, so that's great. Um, what else? Everything, fuel, fuel pump working good? Yeah, oh yeah, fuel pump. Yep, yeah, fuel pump's good now. So, that's all good. Shock travel works. It's it's funny because under under load when it really builds, you can see you can see travel changes. <laughs> it's pretty wild. That's cool. So. All right. Well, sweet. Thanks for the update. And let's see this bad boy rip. Let's make some noise. Let's make some noise.
have it. That's at seven pounds. What? Yeah. Yeah, that's the exact reason why I wear a headset all the time. I'm gonna be 30 and I'm gonna go, what? Huh? So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that number? Good, we actually put down. It seems super smooth. I mean, well, I, I still heard you spinning and saw it, but like, it seemed like it went down like, it was way more gradual. Yeah, because it's we're not putting any any duty in it, so it's literally off the wastegate spring, and then uh, once the jam starts to pick up, then it really then the torque picks up. So it starts the the gates start to open at six pounds, and then yeah, that run it, when the limiters started to come in, it was about eight about yeah seven point nine pounds. So we actually are holding boost. Sweet. The previous runs, if I were to go through and find all the logs, it would like start to creep up to 12, 15 pounds when the mm -hmm. limiter started. So. Gotcha. And this is only at 6,500 RPM and it's 720 horsepower. So if I took this thing to 8 grand, oh, yeah. it'd be well over, it'd be like 850, 900. So. Absolutely. But, uh, and you are on E85 right now, yeah, right? Yeah, C85, yep. What I might do, I might throw some timing at it and see if we pick up any power under the curve. So. All right, we'll let you do your thing. And maybe go round two. So you just got done second or uh, second pull. Yep, it made a little more power with a little bit of timing at it. So now that we had somewhat of a grip, uh, it still kind of spins up top, but it's it's fine. Um, yeah, it made a little more torque, so I'll leave it. I only put two degrees in. It's still, I think we're still like 17 degrees at seven pounds of boost. So whatever. Look who decided to. Sh <laughs> what? This is car reviews right now. We got Benoy here. Benoy, what'd you show up in? Oh, my brand new Miata. So look at this bad boy he's been working on the past couple of, uh, I don't know, it's been about a month and a half? Is that, is that about, yeah, about a month a week, and a half? Yeah, about a week, uh, okay. actually. Well, you've been dedicated to it for about a week. Yeah. So, funny story about this, explain how you got it. Well, I found it on Facebook, 500 bucks, message a dude. Uh, dude said he had something coming out, so I was like, okay. Two weeks later, he responds back to me, he's like, uh, you can come look at it. You're second in line. So, uh, Cody, I told Cody about it. He went and go look at it and he picked it up. So, yeah. what he hasn't said though, and he hasn't prefaced this yet, this thing was smashed. This thing was completely, you said you moved like, or you, when you guys were aligning it, you pulled five inches off the frame, Allison. The frame to get this to be. Mm -hmm. The idea of this was touching the thermostat. Wait, sorry, go ahead. What was that? This close to was touching the thermostat house. Jeez, OP. And uh, I pulled it all back. You know, frame machine helps out. Dude, we went for a rip. I wish I would have brought the camera. It was fun. I know you've got, you still got a couple of stuff to do. Obviously, you said you were going to be painting the fenders. And no, you need to find a proper hood for this thing. Hey. Not 60% not of a hood <laughs> and give you some venting. Nah. But yeah, I like it, hoods. dude. Thank you. I dig it. It's. It was funny. He and Cody just went out for a rip. I went out for a rip with him before. I've never like really been in Miatas. That thing's fun. I now see why people like them. It's just kind of like a drive around fun car. So I totally get it. But other than that, the guys are going to be getting the rest of the body onto the car and we're probably going to end it there because hopefully we're going to be testing at M1 tomorrow. Not hopefully, the guys are going to be testing at M1 tomorrow. I'm still trying to figure out if I can make it or not. So hopefully I can be there. Other than that, thank you guys always for watching, subscribing, sharing, liking. I mean, still, we love the constant support you guys have been giving us. Hopefully, I can get back to some more regular uploading here so you won't be missing out on some content. But, uh, yeah, some fun stuff coming up. Other than that, we'll see you in the next one.